my name's Chloe, I'm one of the two green shoots and this week's how-to video, as voted by you, will explore pests and pest control. Now when you think of pests in your garden, slugs, snails, aphids probably come to mind. In fact, these are all species that form a really important part of the food web within our gardens. Um, so in regards to slugs and snails, they break down organic matter to produce soil, which we need. So um, our role as gardeners is in fact, instead of exterminating these species um, and trying to eradicate them altogether, is actually just to balance out their numbers um, and support that web of life. And in today's video, we're going to be showing you some of the ways we do that within our gardens here in Glingara. So one of the first things we did within our gardens um, when we first arrived was to put in a wildlife pond and wildlife ponds are the single best thing you can do to support that balance of species within your garden. Uh, they bring in a whole host of predatory um, amphibians and um, invertebrates that will actually help to um, eat those pests. So for example frogs, just yesterday we um, spotted our first newts within our garden which is incredibly exciting. We've got a number of breeding pairs um, in the water here and um, so hopefully we'll get a lot more numbers over the coming years. So when we first took on this garden it was completely covered in rhododendron and what we did is we cut up all of the stems to make logs and these we've grouped together to create um, a really spectacular seating space um, or a loggery um, and what's brilliant about this as well as utilising um, these logs to create a structure we've actually created an incredible home um, for particularly frogs and newts. This whole area is sited right beside the pond so they can um, go from the water then up into the logs um, for the cover that they need um, for their life on land the rest of the year. So all of the, the twiggy upper branches of the rhododendron and indeed any other branches that we've cut down um, in making space in the garden we save to create a dead hedge and all the dead hedges is um, two rows of stakes put in the ground and then filled down the middle with all of that brash um, and it creates the most incredible habitat for um, hedgehogs, for nesting birds and also acts as a giant bug hotel. Creating homes for, for your wildlife in your garden is so vitally important and as well as those loggeries and those dead hedges, nest boxes are a fantastic way to bring birds into your garden. Um, we've got nest boxes up all around the, the gardens here um, and it's an absolute thrill to see birds moving into them. If you'd like to make your own, there are loads of places online you can go to find instructions on how to or you can buy nest boxes ready-made. But just be mindful that the, the size of the doorway or the hole into that nest box will control what species of bird can actually set up home. Um, we also put in bat boxes, um, and bats are absolutely brilliant, particularly in here in Lingareth, where we have um, quite a lot of midges um, that aren't so much of a pest for our plants, but are, are for us gardeners. Um, so by bringing bats into our garden, we can help to um, make a little bit of a dent in those midgey numbers. The bats eat about 3,000 midges a night. In our garden, every time we go digging, we hit rock. Um, and what we do is save it up and use that to make dry stone walls. Um, as well as being really functional and helping to make beds and borders and edge paths, um, they are a fantastic habitat. We've noticed a lot of birds nesting within the dry stone walls around our garden. They're also brilliant for um, those amphibians again to hide out in, like the newts and your frogs. <laughs> One of the other brilliant ways of bringing predatory insects into your garden um, and in fact birds is to um, develop a wildflower meadow. So this area was um, just very short grass when we first arrived and we've been um, changing the management um, to support the establishment of a wildflower meadow and that is as simple as letting the grass grow long and then introducing a species called yellow rattle, which is a little parasitic flower that uh, weakens grass and allows lots more wildflowers to come in. And it's those wildflowers that will attract um, predatory insects, um, which will in turn, um, by coming into your garden, eat um, aphids off your crops. 
So in some cases, um, munches and holes in leaves around your garden aren't too much to be worried about. They can be quite a temporary thing. And this is a great example. I've got two leaves, one with um, a couple of bites taken out and the other one to show you is a normal um, leaf. Um, in fact, this is the work of um, a leaf cutter bee um, that will be creating its nest using um, leaves at this time of year. It's just part of, as I said, that web of life within your garden and appreciating that some species will be having a nibble here and there and then leaving your plants alone, so don't worry. Third area of pest control is actually starting with your plants and making sure they're really, really healthy. So choose um, fresh seed um, and then eventually when your plants are ready for putting out in the garden, make sure that you take time to harden them off. So that is taking them out during the day um, for about a week and then bring them in during the night. Um, so making sure they're, uh, when they do finally get planted in the garden, they aren't stressed and they're not going to be shocked by um, the temperature change. The other thing that's really important to healthy plants is soil. So make sure that you add as much organic matter as you can um, to your soil. We do that in two ways. We add um, compost whenever we plant a plant and we mix that in with the um, soil that's already there. And every year we mulch the garden. And so in the autumn, we actually use seaweed. We go out and we collect lots and lots of bags of seaweed and then spread it over the ground. And the worms then work that organic matter into the um, ground for you um, all winter long. There's no digging involved. Um, and you end up with a really, really um, mineral, nutrient-rich um, organic matter that you can plant into. Another thing to think about is where you put your plants. Now hostas, um, are, we absolutely love eating. We use them as a, a food crop in our garden, but they're absolutely loved by slugs and snails. So we've put these ones along a, by the side of a pond. Um, and ponds, as you well know, attract um, lots of frogs. And frogs, in turn, will eat those slugs and snails. So the fourth area of pest control is using barriers. A good example of that are with um, brassicas, so kale or cabbage. Um, we often use netting to prevent um, cabbage white butterflies from coming in contact and laying their eggs and then their caterpillars eating your um, delicious cabbage and your kale plants and smithereens. So some of the other um, barriers that you can put in place to stop your pest getting in contact with your crop are um, with the example of slugs and snails. You can put crushed up um, seashells, um, coffee grounds, um, rough rock, sand. Um, you can make collars out of um, yogurt pots by putting a jagged edge on the top. We find a combination of all of those um, and throwing as much at it, um, it works the best. And the final um, type of barrier control is actually to look at um, the height that you're planting your plants at. So the best example of that, for instance, are carrots. And carrots are preyed on the carrot fly. Um, carrot fly only like flying up to about um, a foot in height. So if you put carrots in raised beds that are um, taller than about a foot, you'll find um, you have much less um, damage from carrot fly. So think about the height as well. So thanks so much for watching, hope you found today's video helpful, if you've got any questions as ever sew them below or feel free to email us and um, we always love hearing from you, please do carry on sending your requests in for future videos 